What's up guys, I am Lee Morris with fstoppers.com and right here in front of me I have the brand new Surface Book by Microsoft and the Surface Pro 4. In this video I'm gonna go through some of the things that I've learned while using both of these units to help you guys decide which one you may want to buy. First of all, let me give you a quick rundown of what both of these units are. Uh, they're both brand new laptops by Microsoft, but they're laptop slash tablet hybrids. And uh, basically with the Surface Pro here, you can take this off and still use this just like it's uh, any other tablet. They both come with Surface pens and they just snap onto the side, which is awesome. The Surface Pro 4 has a kickstand in it, which I thought I wouldn't like, and I have to say, I absolutely love it. I've, I've really been enjoying using this thing. It doesn't have settings where it clicks into place. You can actually move it and leave it wherever you want. The keyboard snaps on with a magnet here, um, so you can use the keyboard if you want to. Obviously, the Surface Book looks like a normal laptop, but if you press this button right here, it will detach the top and then the top becomes a tablet as well, which is absolutely amazing. First of all, let's talk about the specs on both of these computers. Uh, when I first saw these unveiled, I assumed that the Surface Pro 4 would be underpowered compared to the Surface Book. I thought the Surface Book would be way more powerful and have a lot more options, and that's not entirely true. You can get the exact same hard drive, the exact same RAM, the exact same processor in both of these units. The only advantage to the Surface Book is that you can get the Surface Book with a GPU inside the base here. And what that's going to allow you to do is uh, get a little bit more performance in things like video games or some software that actually takes advantage of the graphics processor. So for instance, a program like Adobe Premiere, when you're playing back footage, it does not use GPU, it just uses the processor. But if you start adding effects in, like you start changing the color of the video or you add sharpening or something like that, and you don't render the video and you just hit play, that's when it will start using the GPU and you may see an advantage with the Surface Book over the Surface Pro 4. Let's quickly talk about the prices on both of these units. The Surface Book begins at $1,500 and the Surface Pro 4 begins at $1,000. And basically, if you buy the Surface Book at $1,500, you're not even getting the graphics processor at all. It's really the exact same configuration as the Surface Pro 4, but you're paying an additional $500 for a little bit more battery life and of course the, the keyboard and everything. To actually get the GPU, you're gonna have to go up two stages. You're gonna have to get 256 gigabytes uh, of hard drive, eight gigabytes of RAM, and an i5 processor, and that brings the price to $1,900. So as you can see, this is not a cheap computer by any means. Right now we have the second most expensive option here, which is 512 SSD, i7, 16 gigabytes of RAM with the graphics card. And this computer, the way it sits right here, is $2,700, a very, very expensive laptop. The Surface Pro 4 that I have right here is the second cheapest option. It has 256 gigabytes of SSD, an i5 processor, and eight gigabytes of RAM. For normal everyday use, when we're talking about web browsing, writing emails, using Photoshop, using Lightroom on single images at a time, I can't tell any difference between the two. You're going to start seeing a difference when you start doing batch processing or you start trying to edit footage that's layered on top of each other. You start adding lots of effects. Then you'll see a little advantage with the Surface Book, the better processor, and the graphics card. When it comes to the jacks that are on both of these units, uh, the Surface Pro 4 is a little sparse. All we have is one USB 3 and one display port on the side, whereas the Surface Book has on the left side two USBs, an SD slot, and on the right side it has a display port. Luckily, Microsoft has made this really cool dock that allows you to plug in these units and you can get dual 4K display ports out, four USB jacks, an ethernet port, and it charges the unit all with one magnetic cable. And this just slides right in the side and pops right into both of these. And I would suggest if you're planning on using this at home or the office, you're definitely gonna wanna buy this, but it's not cheap, it's $200. The screen on both of these computers looks very, very similar. Obviously, it's a little bit bigger on the Surface Book, but I have to say, there's something going on with the refresh rate on the Surface Book. If you scroll quickly on the website, 
I, I feel like I can see a little bit more blur as I move the screen around and it just seems sharper to me on the Surface Pro. I don't know if, if that's an illusion or if that's the actual case, but it makes me feel like the screen on the Surface Pro 4 is actually better than on the Surface Book. Let's talk a little bit about battery life on both of these units. The Surface Pro 4 says it can go up to nine hours. You know, one of the positive things about a tablet like this is that it's a full blown laptop. You can do whatever you want with it. But one of the downsides is you can do whatever you want with it and you're gonna run out the battery really fast if you start doing hardcore processes with it. Now, the Surface Book has 12 hours of battery life because it actually has two sets of batteries in it. It has one set of batteries in the uh, top unit here so that this can work on its own. And then it has another battery unit in the bottom unit itself. So the top of this unit here has a battery that can only last three hours, which really isn't that useful. I don't think Microsoft made this with the intent that you would use this top unit by itself very often. I think it's meant to be used with the base the majority of the time. The problem is, is that if you run the battery out on this and then you plug it into the base unit, even though the base unit should have nine more hours of battery life, it will not charge the top unit. The one thing that I think is the main problem though is that if the top is completely dead and the bottom is completely full and you wanna take the top off just to flip it around real quick, you wouldn't be able to do that without shutting down the computer first and then turning it back on. Now, one of the biggest reasons that you would choose the Surface Book over the Surface Pro 4 is the fact that it has a better keyboard and mouse. Uh, but how much better is it actually? Uh, the Surface Pro 4 has a really good keyboard and mouse. It's much better than I ever thought it would be, but at the same time, I have to be honest and say, one, it's not very comfortable in your lap. So if you're traveling a lot and you're going to be writing a lot, I can't really recommend it for that, especially for hours and hours of use. It also, vibrates. It makes this weird vibrating sound as you type. It's certainly not a deal breaker, but it's just not as comfortable to use as a normal laptop for extended periods of time. Obviously, the Surface Book works just like any other laptop. The keyboard is incredible. The way the keys click, but they also feel soft at the same time is really, really nice. Both trackpads really do feel awesome. They both work great, believe it or not. I did not think that I would like the trackpad at all on the Surface Pro 4 just because the little keyboard is so small. But the mouse pad feels and works great. Um, obviously, you're gonna get a little bit more real estate with the Surface Book, but neither one is bad. So at the end of the day, guys, I think you need to determine what you wanna do with your product, and that will make it easy for you to decide which one of these to buy. If you're the type of person who travels a lot, you want extra battery life, and you're gonna be typing a lot, then definitely go with the Surface Book. It's much more comfortable to type on. It's much more comfortable to set on your lap. If you're the type of person that wants a really powerful tablet that can also be used with a keyboard, then definitely use the Surface Pro 4. I thought for sure that I would like the Surface Book more, and I have to say, I think I actually like the Surface Pro for the best. I like the form factor. I like the fact that it has the kickstand. Um, and I like the fact that it has the battery power built into the tablet because I wanna use it most in tablet mode. And then when I use a keyboard and mouse, I'm going to use my huge command center back here at the office with dual 4K monitors and a special keyboard and mouse. For my laptop, I want it to be small and easy to take around. And I love the fact that I can have a full Windows 10 experience on a touchpad. That's pretty amazing. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this comparison video. If you want to see more videos that we did with the Surface Pro 4 and Surface Book, you can check those out here. And make sure you subscribe to our channel for more photography and video related content.